What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be showing you how to upgrade your valve springs and set your valve lash. Now a lot of people have been asking for this video for quite a while how to do 18 pound valve springs and how to set the valve lash. Now we're going to show you on a Hemi and a non-Hemi Predator. We're not going to go in too much detail on the Hemi because it's pretty much the same concept. It's just different taking the valve rockers out of the head. Now the only thing you're going to need is a 14 millimeter wrench and a 9 millimeter wrench as well as some filler gauges and maybe a pick or a flathead for the Hemi valve train. Now, we're gonna jump right into this on the workbench. We're gonna show you how to determine whether you have a Hemi or a non-Hemi engine and get these things swapped out. Now, I dug around in my old engine pile and I found a non-Hemi engine. Now, you can always tell the difference between a Hemi and a non-Hemi simply by the valve covers. The non-Hemi is always gonna have a stamped steel valve cover, either, either this octagon shape or the Hondas have a little bit different shape to them and uh, the Hemi's always have this cast aluminum valve cover. Now I have painted mine green but they're normally just silver in color and they're always this rectangle shape. Now I do prefer the Hemi's over the non-Hemi's because the hemispheric head has a lot better flow and I believe it has a little bit bigger valves in it as well. And the valve train is just set up a lot better than a non-Hemi so uh, I really recommend you go with the Hemi engine if you can. Now before we start we're going to need to pull the valve covers off and watch the valves get the piston at top dead center. The best way to do that is pull the spark plug out, look down in the combustion chamber, and when the piston gets at its highest point, that's top dead center, and make sure there's no pressure on either valve spring, and then you're ready to proceed in taking out the valve rockers and swapping those springs out. You're also going to need a little bit of rope to feed down in the combustion chamber through the spark plug hole to keep the valves from falling down on the piston. A lot of people says to use compressed air, but I like rope because everybody has a little bit of rope laying around. So just shove as much as you can down in that combustion chamber. So we're going to start with the non-Hemi first. So let's jump right into this. So this is a non-Hemi Predator or a GX200, the same type head. Uh, the only thing that's different is if you go to the Hemi Predator. So we got four eight millimeters around this valve cover. So now that we have the valve cover off, you can see the valve rockers and these two nuts on top of the valve rocker. Now the outer nut is the locking nut that locks everything down in place so your valves won't come out of adjustment. And the one right under it is a 14 millimeter and that's what sets the actual tension on the valve. Now what we're gonna do is get a 14 millimeter wrench and put on that inner locking nut and then a 10 millimeter on the outer one and go ahead and break that loose on both sides. Now that we have that, we can completely remove the outer locking nut. Now we can remove the set nut on the valve rocker. Now we can pull the valve rocker out of place and lay it aside. We're going to do the same thing through the exhaust valve. So if you'll notice the exhaust valve have, has a lash cap on it and the intake does not on the non-Hemi engine or the GX200. Now on the Hemi engine both sides have a lash cap. Now I normally use a magnetic screwdriver but we did not need it on this engine. There's that lash cap there. So now if we was to be removing these valve springs, we're gonna to want to take out the spark plug and feed some sort of rope inside there to keep the valves from falling down on the piston. So let's remove that spark plug and we can feed the rope down inside there. So we have the piston at top dead center. Now I'm gonna take a small piece of rope, kind of like pull cord rope works really good. And I'm gonna feed this rope all the way into the combustion chamber to make sure that the valves don't fall down on the piston because it'll be harder to do the springs. Now I have a little pick I'm pushing that rope down in there with. Helps feed all the rope I can get down into that combustion chamber. Now I should have enough rope in there to keep those valves from, from falling and hitting the piston. Now we simply got to push on these valve caps and move them to the side. There's a little notch on the valve caps and then you can pull the cap out with the spring. Now you can see the standard spring. I can push it fairly easy with my hand, 
but the 18 pound spring is, has twice the tension on it so you can see that these 18 pound springs are going to work out much better in higher rpms now we're simply going to place that spring on there we're going to lay the cap in the spring set the spring on there we can push down and back up and get it seated all into place now we can set that lash cap back onto that exhaust valve do the same process for the intake valve we push the cap down into the side as you can see the valve cap has a oblong hole with a bigger hole on the side that's where you push it down push it to the side and the valve will push right through the head of that cap now we have our new 18 pound spring for the intake valve we're going to set it down into place set the hat on top simply push down go under that valve and everything is locked in place so you can see on these valve rockers one side has an indent in it and the other side is kind of pumped out the outward one goes on the push rod going down to the cam and the indentation goes to the actual valve itself we're just going to set that in place go ahead and just finger tight this retaining nut then we can take our lock nut and just get it threaded on there we're going to do the same thing for the intake side now we can just thread on our lock nut on that side so now we got to set the valve lash and then we're pretty much done with this process now you're going to need a set of filler gauges these are basically a bunch of really thin pieces of metal and they have the thickness marked on them you're going to need a set i always like to buy a set that goes all the way down to two thousandths of an inch you can buy these at pretty much any part store should have these filler gauges so now we're going to go on to adjust the intake valve lash now we're going to do the intake valve at six thousandths of an inch since this engine is cold we're going to do it at five thousandths of an inch because once everything warms up it'll give it that little bit of play so what we need to do is get our five thousandths of an inch filler gauge and right now it will not fit in between there so we need to loosen this set nut until it just slides in and out of there freely now that we have that now we can hold the 14 millimeter and tighten down this lock nut to set everything in place you're going to want to keep that set nut as straight as possible now once again we're going to take our filler gauge and get it in between there see when we tightened it it did move some so we need to back it out just a hair so now after we got that tightened up we're going to make sure that five thousandths of an inch filler gauge fits down in there nice and snug where it'll slide in but there's not much tension so on the exhaust valve we're going to do seven thousandths of an inch because it does call for eight thousandths and like i said it's cold so uh, once the engine heats up it'll loosen up a bit and that looks like it fits in there quite well we're actually going to go in from this side loosen it until you get it in there you know where there's a little bit of tension on it but not too much now we can lock that down in place now we can test it once more to make sure everything is adjusted to our locking and it seems like that is so we're done with adjusting the valves now we can pull this cord back out of the combustion chamber and we can put our spark plug back in and put our valve cover back on and she should be ready to go what I meant to mention on these valves is you're not going to get it right on the first time. Uh, practice makes perfect. Just play with it. And uh, once you set down that lock nut, you're probably going to have to do a little bit more adjustment on it. Uh, you know, there's only so much I can show you on camera. But just play with that filler gauge. Just make sure, you know, there's not too much tension on the filler gauge and not a lot of slack or anything. You want to do a happy medium. Now, a lot of people is going to say in the comments what they think the intake and exhaust valve should be, but I went with the original GX200 specs on this. Um, it's your call what you want to run your lash at. I've seen people run it all the way down to, to three thousandths of an inch and all the way up to eight. So that's completely your preference on how you want to do it. So let's grab the Hemi engine now and we'll show you how to pull those valve springs out. And the adjustment is going to be about the same on it. 
Uh, I'm not going to really go into too much detail on it because this engine is actually in adjustment already. But, you know, it's the same concept, but we'll take a look in there and I'll show you how to do it. So I went and grabbed the Hemi that I had laying on the shelf over there. This Hemi is actually for Lonnie's chopper that we're going to be building very soon. Same thing, we've got four eight millimeter bolts on the valve cover. So you can see the valve setup looks a whole lot different on a Hemi. And of course, if you don't know how to tell if you have a Hemi or not, the Hemi valve cover looks like this. It's more of a rectangle shaped valve cover instead of the, the octagon shape one that's on the non-Hemi. This is a lot better setup. I love the Hemi's valve train because you don't have to readjust the valves after putting 18 pound valve springs in these engines. This already has the 18 pound valve springs. Taking out the valve springs is the same uh, steps as the other engine, but taking the rockers off is a little bit different. You have some sir clips holding these valve rockers onto this casted arm in the head. So we'll get you up close and we'll pop that sir clip out and show you how to remove it. And then the rest of it's all the same. Removing the valve springs, you push down the hat, move it aside. Same concept as the, uh, the non-Hemi engine. You can see we have the valve rockers here. There's a pin with sir clips on each side of it holding the valve rocker to this casted ear that's inside this uh, valve cover area on top of the head. Now I always take off the outside circlip because it'll allow you to push that shaft inward in between these valve rockers. And be sure to stuff a paper towel down in this bottom area of the head because your circlip can fall down in there and run down in the holes where your valve push rods run down inside the head. So you definitely don't want to do that. I've did it before. It's not super hard, but uh, it's not fun trying to fish those things out of there. So I always take a paper towel and shove down in there. So we have the, the paper towel I'll shove down in there. I am going to take out the spark plug, get the engine at top dead center so there's no pressure on either valve. Okay, so this engine is at top dead center because we can move the valve rockers. They're not under any kind of a load. So now I'm going to pop off this outer circlip. Now be real careful when popping this off. I always cut my hand around it so the clip doesn't go flying. So I'm gonna get it. There's two grooves in a circlip. You can use a circlip set of pliers, but I find it easier just to pop it out like this. You do it however you think is best. You can see I just pried up on it. You can see that circlip there. I put pressure on one of those ears there and cut my hand around it and it pops right out. Like I said, you can use a pair of circlip pliers, but I find it easier just to do it that way. Once you have that circlip off, you can just push that shaft right out through the center. You can see that valve rocker just slides right out of there and there's no valve adjustment needed when replacing the springs on a Hemi Predator. Now you'd simply take the valve cap off and push down on the valve hat and move it to the side just like the non-Hemi. There's nothing different but make sure you uh, put that lash cap back on there and then when reinstalling it you just slide the rocker back on slide the shaft through the center now when putting back this circlip you want to be careful like before it can go flying and they're pretty small i have a few of these i keep extra just in case they go flying but um i always just lay a flathead on the top and snap them right back down in place now that valve rocker is seated now to adjust the valves on a hemi engine you have your lock nut that's seated right up against the valve rocker. You're gonna to wanna to put a nine on that nut, a nine millimeter wrench, and then you have a square head on this valve adjusting screw. That just goes down and touches that lash cap. And you're gonna to wanna to put a, I use a small set of adjustable wrench on this little square head, and you're gonna hold it still while you break this nine millimeter lock nut down. Then just adjust that to the lash setting just like we did before. Then you can tighten down this nine millimeter nut while holding this square head still. Once you put your circlips back in, we can remove our paper towel. We can put our valve cover back on and we're pretty much done with installing valves and adjusting the valve springs on a Hemi engine. Guys, I hope I explained it well enough for you to grasp how to do this. It's really simple, there's nothing to it. The more you do it, the more you're gonna get used to it and you'll get faster and faster at it. Now don't be scared of this, as long as that filler gauge fits in there pretty snug but not too snug or not you know don't leave a lot of gap in there uh, just make sure whatever you decide to set your exhaust and intake valves to um, make sure that filler gauge is real snug in there and I always go a size smaller 
so when everything heats up you know it'll loosen up a little bit so guys this is not the exact valve lash you need to set it to this i just use the the stock gx 200 specs so uh, you can find your happy medium where you like your valve set to. You know, there's a lot of people that'll argue and say this size and this size. So just find out what you like and, and run that. The more you do this, the easier it'll get. So just practice and uh, you'll get good at it and you'll get faster and faster as time goes by. Make sure to go check out Go Power Sports for all your go-kart and mini bike needs. They have these 18-pound valve springs. So pick you up a set if you're removing the governor because you will need them. The, uh, the Hemi will, or the non Hemi Predator will float the valves around 5,500 RPMs. You can kind of hear it. You could hear it a lot on Little Red when we did it. So it's it's definitely a must-have if you're taking out the governor. And uh, make sure to go check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Give us a like and a follow there. We put pictures out before the videos come out, so you'll know what to look forward to, and you know you'll know a lot more about our builds by following us on Instagram and Facebook. Guys, always check out the links in the description below, and always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.